Today, we're going to introduce vertex covers. We'll talk about the definition, see some examples, and see a couple of results concerning vertex covers. If you're familiar with edge covers, this is a very similar concept. A vertex and incident edge are said to cover each other. So for example, looking at this four cycle down here, the edge V1, V2, covers V1 and it covers V2. But we could also say that V1 covers this edge and we could say that V2 covers this edge. So then a vertex cover in a graph is a set of vertices that covers all edges of the graph. Again, looking at our four cycle, if we were to include the vertices V1, V2, and V3 in a set, together all three of them cover the graph. So this is a vertex cover. Every edge in the graph is covered by at least one of these vertices. So remember, a vertex cover is made up of vertices, and they are covering the edges. An edge cover is the other way around. An edge cover is made up of edges and covers the vertices. But today, we're talking about vertex covers. One thing you might notice about this vertex cover is that we don't actually need all three of these vertices to cover all the edges. If we removed V2 from our vertex cover, we would get a smaller vertex cover. This edge and this edge are covered by V1, whereas this edge and this edge are covered by V3. So this is indeed a vertex cover of the graph. Every edge is incident with at least one vertex in this set, so it is a vertex cover. Furthermore, now it is a minimum vertex cover. It's a minimum vertex cover because there's no other vertex cover of this graph with fewer vertices. There is another minimum vertex cover. Instead of V1 and V3, we could use V2 and V4 to cover all the edges, but there's no vertex cover with fewer than two vertices. So this is a minimum vertex cover of C4. And the number of vertices in a minimum vertex cover is called the vertex covering number of the graph. So here we see that the vertex covering number of C4, the four cycle, is two because its minimum vertex covers have two vertices. And this notation is not universal, but it's used in my favorite graph theory textbook. Beta of a graph is used to denote the vertex covering number. So beta of C4 equals two. And we might as well go ahead and do some color coding here. We'll make the vertex covering number words and the notation the same color. Let's make them blue. So again, the minimum number of vertices in a vertex cover of a graph is the vertex covering number of the graph. And a vertex cover with this minimum cardinality is called a minimum vertex cover. So again, this is a minimum vertex cover. It has two vertices. That's the minimum needed to cover this graph. And so its vertex covering number denoted beta of the graph is equal to two. For another quick example, we could look at the five cycle. If we include the vertices U1 and U3 in a vertex cover, we'll have almost all edges covered except for this one down here. So we're gonna need one more vertex, doesn't matter if we include U5 or U4, let's say we include U5. Then this vertex subset containing U1, U3, and U5 is a vertex cover of C5, and it happens to be a minimum vertex cover. Now, since this is a minimum vertex cover with three vertices, what can we say about C5? Well, since the minimum number of vertices in a vertex cover of C5 is three, three is the vertex covering number of C5. And so we can write that beta of C5 is three. That's the vertex covering number. In general, what do you think the vertex covering number of a cycle graph is? Take a minute to think about it and then I will give you the answer. All right, let's first consider cycle graphs with an even number of vertices. So the vertex covering number of Cn, but we'll write over here, n 
even. Remember that every cycle graph is two regular, so every vertex covers two edges. And a cycle graph has as many edges as it has vertices. So if it has an even number of vertices and each vertex covers two edges, then all we need is half the total number of vertices to cover all the edges, right? Looking at our example C4, there are four vertices, four edges, each vertex covers two edges, so we only need two vertices, half of the total. Now, coming over here, what about if n is odd? Then what can we say about the vertex covering number of Cn? Well, in general, the definition of an odd number is that it's equal to 2k plus 1 for some integer k. Again, since a cycle is too regular, k vertices will cover 2k edges. But if we have an odd number of vertices, we'll have an odd number of edges, and so there will still be that plus one edge left over. And so we'll need an extra vertex to cover that extra edge. And counting that number of vertices that we'll need can be accomplished by, again, dividing by two, but now rounding up. So this is the ceiling function, which rounds the number to the nearest integer greater than or equal to it. Looking at our five cycle, two vertices are enough to cover four edges, but there's one edge left over, so we need one more vertex to cover that edge. That's three vertices, which checks out with our formula. The ceiling of five over two is 2.5 rounded up to the nearest integer greater than or equal to it, and that's three. But now the nice thing is, when n is even, the nearest integer greater than or equal to half of n is half of n, because when n is even, half of n is an integer. And so in general, whether n is even or n is odd, the vertex covering number of the cycle graph on n vertices is the ceiling of n over 2, the ceiling of half the order of the graph. When n is even, that ceiling function isn't going to change n over 2, and when n is odd, that ceiling function will round it up just like we need. Now, here's another way we could state the definition of a vertex cover. It's equivalent to our previous definition, but the way this one is stated, I think, helps illuminate the next point I want to make. Let G be a graph with vertex set V and edge set E, and then take a subset X of the vertex set. If UV being an edge implies that at least one of the vertices is in X, so U is in X or V is in X, then X is a vertex cover of G. Again, this is just saying that X is a vertex cover if every edge of the graph is covered by a vertex in X. Because this part says, in order to be a vertex cover, an edge being in the graph implies that at least one of its end vertices is in X, so that the edge is being covered. Then what I want you to think about is what happens if we take the complement of a vertex cover. The complement meaning the set of all vertices not in the vertex cover. Well, if you think about it a little bit, you may come to the conclusion that, here's the answer, the complement of a vertex cover is an independent set. Independent vertex sets we've talked about before. I'll leave a link in the description if you need a recap. It's just a set of vertices, none of which are adjacent to each other. If we go back up to our five cycle, we can see an example of an independent set. This vertex cover right now is not an independent set because U1 and U5 are adjacent. But if we got rid of U5, this would no longer be a vertex cover, but it would be an independent set, a set of vertices, no two of which are adjacent. Now, why is it that the complement of a vertex cover is an independent set? Well, in order for the complement to not be independent, it would have to have two vertices that are joined by an edge. But if the complement had two vertices that are joined by an edge, that would have meant that the vertex cover didn't have either of those vertices. But that would then mean that the edge joining them isn't being covered. 
which would mean that it wasn't a vertex cover in the first place. So the idea is that a vertex cover, by definition, is always going to have at least one of the vertices incident with each edge, and so when you take the complement of that, you're not gonna get two vertices that are joined by an edge because the vertex cover had to have had at least one of those vertices. Thus, the complement can't have both, and so it will be an independent set. We'll do a rigorous proof of that in a future lesson, so don't sweat it if you don't understand that completely, but take some time to think about it. But let me take you along a little further. If we take the cardinality of a vertex cover, so just the number of vertices in it, and add the cardinality of the complement of the vertex cover, what are we going to get? Well, by definition, the complement consists of all the other vertices. So total, that would be all the vertices in the graph. And so the sum would equal the order of the graph. Then if we were to take the number of vertices in a minimum vertex cover, which is denoted beta of G, the complement of that minimum vertex cover, you can imagine would be a maximum independent set. The notation for the cardinality of a maximum independent set, you may recall, is alpha of g. This is the vertex independence number, the number of vertices in a maximum independent vertex set. So once more, the idea is that if we take the cardinality of a minimum vertex cover, that is by definition, the vertex covering number, beta of g, the complement of that, you can imagine, we're not proving it, we will in the future, but you can imagine that the complement of a minimum vertex cover would be a maximum independent set, the cardinality of which is the independence number of the graph denoted alpha of g. Then, since we said a vertex cover and the complement of the vertex cover contain all the vertices of the graph by definition, we have that the sum of these two things is equal to, we might say, n, the order of the graph. So that is a nice result that we'll prove in a later lesson. I'll leave a link to it in the description. The vertex covering number of a graph plus its vertex independence number equals the order of the graph. All right, one last thing, try these on your own. What do you think the vertex covering number of a complete graph is? You can answer the question in general or just try for one complete graph like K5. And then what do you think the vertex covering number of a complete bipartite graph is? Again, you can figure it out for this example or in general. All right, here are the quick informal solutions. In a complete graph, by definition, every pair of vertices is joined by an edge. So if there are two vertices that are not in our vertex cover, for example, maybe we try to make a vertex cover with U1, U2, and U3. Here, there are two vertices not in the vertex cover. Since this is a complete graph, we know that they're joined by an edge, and so, oh no, it turns out this wasn't a vertex cover to begin with. So the idea is for a complete graph, if there are two vertices not in your set, then that set can't possibly be covering all edges of the graph. And so certainly the vertex covering number of a complete graph is going to be one less than the number of vertices, so long as the number of vertices is greater than one. As for a complete bipartite graph, by definition, every edge in such a graph goes from one set to the other, right? It's bipartite. Thus, as long as you have all vertices from one of the partite sets, every edge will have to be going from one partite set to the other, and so you're guaranteed to have all edges covered. Now, since you can cover a complete bipartite graph by taking all vertices in either partite set for the minimum covering number, you'll want to take all the vertices in the smaller partite set. So we can say the vertex covering number of the complete bipartite graph KRS is equal to R, where we'll say that R is the cardinality of the smaller partite set, and they're both at least one. The last two things I'll mention is that if a graph has no edges, then any subset of the vertex set would technically be a vertex cover. And secondly, we're guaranteed that every graph does have a vertex cover because you can't have an edge without having incident vertices. So certainly, if you just took 
every vertex from a graph, that would always be a vertex cover. And that's it. Again, a vertex is said to cover its incident edges. Then, a vertex cover in a graph is a set of vertices that covers all of the graph's edges. A vertex cover of minimum cardinality is called a minimum vertex cover, and the number of vertices in a minimum vertex cover is called the graph's vertex covering number, which we will denote beta of the graph. Got a nest in my chest for the dreams of sleep and beauty, slow of 